Hi, you're very welcome to this week's nutrition event with uh, the Irish Holistic Cultural Association President, Martin Ford. Martin, you're very welcome again. We're so excited to have you join us for this uh, discussion on nutrition. Thanks very much, Jamie. Appreciate it. I hope everybody is staying cheerful while they're locked down or semi-lockdown at this point, you know? If not, we have ways of helping you be cheerful, as you well know, Jamie. That's it, yeah. Person who's high in energy, it's very difficult to become uh, uh, sad or unwell. So exactly we're, that. We're, exactly. We're doing that. everything possible to keep people and, and energy. And those and those little steps to keep your energy going through the body properly and building it up. So, so for those of you that are joining us for the first time um, to this event, just to give you a little bit of background about Martin. So Martin is a graduate of the British College of Naturopathy and Osteopathy, which is now the British College of uh, Osteopathic Medicine. So he, um, he also has extensive experience in the practice of holistic medicine. And Martin, I, I know that one of the things that you're most proud of is that you came up with the content and put together the course for a Duco gym. So involved in training the the trainers and people who are involved in the Duco Gym. So you're very welcome again. And we, we want to get stuck into this um, topic today. So we, we talked about it briefly last week and anybody who wants to catch up, that's available on our Facebook Live. Um, it's one of the recorded events. So please do watch it. You'll learn a lot about immunity, but we want to follow on with that topic. And again, we're going to dive into core strength, I think is what we're going to talk about and how it supports your immunity. Is that, isn't that right? Uh, Jamie, of course, core strength, people will think in terms of do you have strong abs and all the rest of it. Yes, okay, that's nice and good, but I have a different interpretation on core strength. To me, core strength is what holds your cells together. Is that happening in a strong way or is everything falling apart? Is the tissue that you're made of, which is actually holding your cells together, being functional in the proper manner? It's a boast to let through all the good things and stop all the bad things. And that's your, the key to your immune system. Yeah, so, I mean, it's interesting because when you think of vitality and life energy and you, you really want to, I suppose, think about how is a person going to have the, the best level of health or even how do you measure health? Because people often think, okay, I don't get sick often. And that's why, that must mean I'm healthy. But we think in it of health in different terms, almost like the full level of energy or vitality. Absolutely. It's the energy in your body that keeps you well. How often do you hear a person maybe say, I was never sick a day in my life when they're faced with something, well, that they don't want to have. Now, I agree with the idea, hey, we're not going to be sick. I don't do sick, that type of thing. I'm probably like that myself. When I... Uh, put together a program for myself. One of the things that I do is make sure that I'm absorbing protein properly. Now, that's all part of the training routine, as you know, Jamie. And from my own point of view, I use some of the resources that we have, some of the protein retention, protein retention resources, because I'm aware that as people get older, they retain protein less well. And in fact, they can start losing it quite a bit. That's not just from their muscles. The muscles might get smaller, maybe, but it can be from other parts of the body, very important parts like your brain or your uh, kidneys or your liver or all those other parts that go together to making uh, an energetic human being. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? I mean, I think uh, looking at the, the, the facts of it all after the age of 30 and um, between the age of 30 and 60, I think you lose 30% of your muscle mass. And maybe people might not be like so concerned initially about that, but obviously it's not just from the body you see, it's also from your organs, which also therefore affects your hormone secretion. So the whole thing, I guess, goes together. And so what can people do as they get older to maybe reverse that process or even, well, certainly to slow it down? One of the things, I'm gonna tell you a little anecdote here. One of the things they can do, sadly, from some people's point of view, is to take food supplements. And the anecdote I have to tell you is a man who has been calling me, rightly calling me, for advice on certain conditions that he has, including a lot of arthritis. He only called me the other day to say, well, that's improved an awful lot. Now, he's given me a diet for me to review, but because of various circumstances connected to him, it hasn't happened. All I've done with him is put him on supplements. For instance, magnesium and bio oils. They're two of the main ones. 
he went down to his physio and was, as patients like to, to, to hear, he was praised to the high heavens for his improvement. Wow. Well, I was pleased to hear that because he was a man that was full of doubt originally. Yeah. I said, just keep going with those. That will work for you. Now, he has other things the matter with him, and that too will improve. So let's talk then about the difference between being anabolic and catabolic, because I think, you know, I, 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 from our point of view, if we're trying to help somebody with nutrition, we're very much trying to get them to eat a natural diet, a diet that the body has evolved on. We're maybe trying to cut sugars. And then we're probably focusing on protein and increasing the level of amino acids and protein content in the diet. So maybe you'd explain why that's so important. Well, as a child, you're growing, and that's a very, very anabolic state. Anabolic means growing up. Now, when you get to be about the age of 26, you've done your growing. And when, when you're at that age, you probably need to take some kind of steps to keep up that anabolic drive. Otherwise, then bit by bit, slowly, slowly, and particularly with sitting around, as we may have to do in an office, or possibly do at home or watching television, then that inactivity causes that loss, loss of power in your various organs and in your muscles and in your bones, particularly bones for ladies, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, the anabolic drive, in order to, to uh, keep that up, there are two things you need to do. Number one is you need to eat properly. And number two, you need to exercise. Now, one of the reasons I'm putting it in that order is that there are great examples of older people who don't particularly exercise. Sorry, Jamie, this is not what the Edukagen people may uh, necessarily recognize widely, but they can do very, very well. And that's a lot to do with a very consistent, steady, correct diet and a very good mental attitude. Now, they may do walking in that, almost certainly they're going to do walking in that. But anybody who is on a normal, what they call a normal diet, and who lives the normal type of, type of life that we live, needs to do exercise. Now, you don't need to do an awful lot of exercise, and certain kinds of exercise are much better than others, but you do need to do exercise to cause the cells to get into this anabolic state where they're creating hormones, creating enzymes, creating tissue, and building up the proper structures. Yeah, so we talked about the importance of protein last week in terms of how it supports your immune system and the role of amino acids and uh, generally how obviously improving your nutrition is going to make such a, such a difference. But when we're looking at um, how to cause the body to absorb it, what are what I mean, I think I've seen in, in research, well, I know I've seen in research even last year. There, there was an article in the Irish Independent and they talked about um, having reviewed a number of studies, they talked about the importance for people as they get older to increase their protein levels. So isn't it true that when you increase protein, you increase your intake of amino acids, that can actually cause the body to gain lean tissue? Isn't that correct? Well, an increase in protein may or may not do that. In conjunction with exercise, yes, very much so. But an increase in protein may run into a limit of your of the digestibility factor. Okay. And if you start giving a lot of protein to older people, you may get a result, you'll get a result with some of them, but others may have a digestibility problem. Mm -hmm. And I don't just mean feeling sick, I mean the actual absorption metabolism of the protein in foods. This is where uh, something like the amino acid, amino energize, product can come in. When they gave pure amino acids to very old people in care homes, without doing any exercise, they gained solid tissue. They gained about half a pound of solid tissue a month. Wow. Now, I was fascinated by that. I take the amino energize and I find that they're incredibly sustaining. Uh, I find I tend not to get sick. I don't have sick days or anything like that. And they keep my energy up very, very well. Now, I would think that a small amount of that provided to people who maybe can't exercise or don't exercise can make a big difference. Maybe even it might motivate them to exercise because if you bring a person's energy up, then that's ha that happens. For instance, I noticed myself 
that with creatine, which is the most research supplement in the world, practically, other than fish oils. And it's the one that not only approved, but recommended by the uh, European Union. Did you know that? That creatine is recommended. They say it supports muscle formation and uh, sports performance. And they say they are good things. And cognitive function as well. It improves cognitive function. Is that correct? It, 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 oh, it actually improves cognitive function, although we're not supposed to be saying that because uh, the research isn't as solid on it. But I believe that because it energizes every cell in the body, that it will energize your brain as well. In fact, there is, there is some evidence to that effect. But what I was going to say is that uh, recently I started taking creatine again. And, you know, I found my motivation to exercise increased a lot. Wow. When you increase your cell cellular energy, all kinds of good things happen. So, so if we're looking at uh, improving absorption, um, how do we improve? So we're going back to this idea of core strength. So yes. the strength between your cells, right? Yes. Yeah. So how do we improve the absorption? How do we get good absorption? How do we improve that core strength? Because everybody, I think, particularly as you get older, would like to at least maintain a good level of strength, but even better, wouldn't it be great to increase it? No, absolutely. Um, well, the reason why the, the glue in between your cells, we call it glue, it's a very complex organ, in fact, uh, is, is important is because it will filter anything unwelcome. For instance, we do not want uh, bacteria or viruses traveling through your system. We do not want unwelcome cells, wrong cells traveling through your system. We do not want uh, everything to be falling apart so you have pains and aches all the time. We want everything to stick together properly and everything to function properly. Not only that, but your immune system has to selectively travel throughout the space between your cells. All those immune cells have to be able to travel properly. Now that's a function of this organ that's in between your cells. And very, very complex, but it's made of protein. And it's also, it's regulated by fats, but made by protein. Made of protein. So anyway, absorption is the question. When you take something like an, a, the proper kind of amino acid, free form amino acid preparation, uh, you absorb it directly, you don't need to digest it at all. It's absorbed directly into your system, energizes your brain. Some of the amino acids directly cause connections in your brain. Wow, okay, brilliant, right. So then let's look at hormones because that's obviously such a, a key aspect of health, energy, getting stronger, burning fat reversing all the things that uh, tend to happen as you as you get older and maybe maybe you're not training so what what can we talk about in terms of how that affects your endocrine system and your hormones just before getting into anything connected to training or directly connected to training i want to say something about the thyroid many many people uh, have a slight slowness in the thyroid it affects women particularly and it can be slight in the sense that the doctor may not pick it up to the extent that he's going to give you something for it. And I want to point out to you that your thyroid runs on amino acids. It runs on protein. Oh, wow. That even if you have enough iodine in your system, unless you have enough tyrosine available and other proteins, then you may not pick it up and enjoy good thyroid action. So th that has to be mentioned because of the prevalence of slightly low thyroid in the in in the uh, in in people in general, if you have a slightly low thyroid, your energy will not be quite there. Some people with some people it fluctuates, and they'll notice that fluctuation in their energy. But uh, this is another reason why protein is is so important because if your thyroid is good, then all the other organs tend to work well. Everything works at the proper level. Okay, amazing. All right, brilliant. So um, good sources of tyrosine then? You can get a tyrosine supplement because it's amazingly good for the neurotransmitters in your brain. I mean, we have one called mind focus there. Yeah. But in general, protein will give you tyrosine. So if you eat protein or if you take a general amino acid uh, preparation, uh, you know, a, a, a supplement, that will give you tyrosine. 
Okay, great. All right. So other other hormones, and I, I know the growth hormone is such an important, vital one. I mean, you, you mentioned at, after the age of 26, where that you turn from anabolic, possibly to catabolic, because you've stopped growing. So, um, and I know it's not the production of growth hormone, it's more the releasing of it. So maybe what could you tell us about growth hormone and um, how people could increase their levels of growth? Well, j just to say to you that, that like thyroid hormone, growth hormone affects every single cell in your body to a wow. huge extent. So whether you have growth hormone available to you or not makes all the, all the difference in the world to how well you are, to, to how well you feel, and even to how well you're resisting illnesses and conditions. So, uh, yes, Jamie, after the age of 26, then the growth hormone availability may decline. One of the reasons for that is that uh, people eat a diet that is high in carbohydrates. Now, maybe a little bit too high in carbohydrates. We don't want to dismiss the idea of taking carbohydrates altogether. But if you take carbohydrates like bread, however it's going to be, say four times a day, bread, porridge, potatoes, uh, wraps, um, can you think of others, cakes, biscuits maybe, and you take that maybe five times a day, then that makes it more difficult for the body to use any amount of growth hormone that, that may be stored in your brain. So the, the growth hormone stores in your pituitary gland in the brain and needs to be made available to the body. But high amounts, really high amounts of carbohydrate in your diet makes that more difficult. Now, in the absence of growth hormone, not the, in the relative absence of growth hormone, then uh, this is where the bit by bit decline in the content of protein in your system comes in, where your organs and glands, as you mentioned, uh, decrease in size and fail to su successfully repair or reproduce themselves at the level that they used to be at. So from the age of 26, there's this tendency for a slight decline. Now that can be counteracted very, very well by any kind of exercise, but by particularly by weight training, particularly by intensive, you know, for 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes, uh, such as is done in the Educo gym, that's the optimal form of exercise for, uh, for the release of growth hormone. So if you can get some growth hormone going for yourself, that will make an enormous difference. And Jamie, you see the transformation in people in about two or three months, even in a month of uh, Educo gym training. Oh, but honestly, that's a hormonal response. Yeah, it's so incredible. And um, almost the older the person, and when they do this type of training, the bigger the transformation. The it's bigger the transformation. Oh, it's absolutely amazing. Because they suddenly get growth hormone. Yeah, it and has that rejuvenating effect, doesn't it? Yeah, when they, when they uh, when, back in the 90s, when they first uh, synthesized growth hormone, which was very difficult to get before that, yeah. they gave it to older people, and those older people were literally rejuvenated. They lost weight, they gained muscle, their skin came up like more, more youthful skin. Various conditions and problems they had, such as arthritis and various gland problems they had, uh, seemed to disappear. And they became well again. Uh, it, it was incredible, that study. Wasn't that uh, Dr. Rudman, I think, did it in the 90s where he... Uh... That's the famous Rudman study, yeah. 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 And then, it, it, I mean, it was what men between the age of 60 and 80, and they noticed all sorts of uh, positive changes. Some of them, some of them were more, um, their wives were, were, te were telling of the great benefits of uh, growth hormone. But um, with growth hormone, all hormones will, will be improved, even the thyroid. Yeah. So anybody and just to speak like to testosterone. Those, if I can speak to people who think they you know, who have a problem with thyroid or who have a problem with thyroid. Uh, you can't always get to the point where we, you can do it out your medication. So don't do it out your medication. Don't even try. But if you're uh, marginal, then training, growth hormone training and the right diet and the right availability of amino acids, protein in your system will do everything for you. 
So to talk to, because I, I know from the study that uh, Dr. Rudman did in the 90s, then they looked at different, um, I suppose, nutrients that would really help to cause the body to release more growth hormone. So maybe you tell us a, a little bit about what nutrients, uh, what foods might be good. I know keeping carbohydrates low, I think that's really because it keeps your insulin down, isn't that right? And insulin and growth this hormone. This is the insulin problem. Yeah, that, that's that, it. That. They work opposite each other. So they're antagonistic. So if you keep your insulin down, growth hormone naturally has a chance at least to come up. So, but what other nutrients are really going to help promote growth hormone? Protein. Protein was the first thing that was noted to promote growth hormones. So an increased protein level in your diet, maybe to 30 to 50% more than what you normally take, that would be the equivalent of taking, say, a protein supplement and a few amino acid uh, tablets, which is typically what people do if, they, if they're training. And that in itself tends to bring up growth hormone. But you can get a much stronger effect, a much bigger effect by taking amino or this is L-ornithine. And this is the, uh, the amino acid, again, a part of, part of your natural body metabolism, which is uh, used to see whether people can produce growth hormones. So doctors will inject a fairly large amount of this ornithine, maybe even into a child because it's harmless. And they look at the response. And if the response is positive, they know that child can produce growth hormone. If the response is negative, they have to give the child growth hormone. But we as adults can use that, even a very small amount of this amino acid taken in the proper manner, and it has to be taken apart from food. When it's taken in the proper manner, it can cause the release of growth hormone from your brain and suddenly cause this rejuvenating effect all through your body. And if you do it in conjunction with the type of growth hormone exercise we're talking about, then you're onto a, a massive winner and you can produce very quick transformations in your well-being. And even just to say it to people, if you're wondering what sort of growth hormone exercises that you could do at the moment, I mean, a minute of uh, squats, full squats, where you're going down as low as you can and doing that as fast as you can for a minute, that can produce very good growth. Maybe we'll demo that one of the other times, Jamie. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because it's true that, that, that a, minute, a minute of intensive exercise may be all you need to, uh, to release growth hormone. I mean, I've done, I've done this. Um, I, I found, I found, if it, just if I may speak personally, I got incredibly strong. I got very, very strong. By taking amino ore and by following the routine to take it properly. To take it properly, you must not take any food with it. Two and a half hours after food and nothing for an, at least an hour afterwards before, and then you could train. And that was the routine that I followed. And then I wouldn't eat after training so that the growth hormone could come up. Now I still follow that routine when I can get at it two or three times a week. But when I, when I found that I could do it very consistently, like every day, I found that the growth hormone came up to a massive extent. And uh, you, just people who are trainers or into training we may appreciate this statistic. When I did this for uh, about three or four months at a uh, in one go, I didn't deviate from it. Uh, I found that I transformed approximately a pound of fat into a pound of muscle every week. Okay, wow. That's a pound of fat into a pound of muscle every week. And I'm not sure if you're quite supposed to be able to do that, but. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, so if anybody, that, that's the supplement. I actually have had it here because I'm taking it at night time. I mean, a war, yes. Yeah. War. Yeah. That, that, we, we have had that on the market. Tony, Tony Quinn uh, learned about that on the stage at the Mr. Universe concert, uh, competition. He was there and he had been invited backstage and he heard some bodybuilders discuss this new supplement that just gave you muscle if you, if you did a small amount of training. That's right. And, and for going people, on from that. And people who are interested in taking it, the, the amount that you take is roughly, is it between three and six grams? Does that really make the difference? Three grams would be enough. Three grams for an amino acid. Remember, the normal person will take in 100 grams of protein. Now, not all complete protein, so it may not all be the highest quality, but they normally take in about 100 grams. The normal man will take about 100 grams of protein, according to the 
statistics in Ireland. And uh, so therefore three grams of something is not a lot in terms of the overall picture of your intake of amino acids. But small amounts of the right kinds of amino acids are gonna make the vital difference. Amino ore is one that works beyond well. And people who just want to lose weight can take it before they go to bed at night. And that works very well as well. Okay, brilliant. So then if we're looking at this idea of core strength, so talk to, talk to me a little bit about um, casein and the importance of casein protein, particularly obviously calcium caseinate. You see, not all proteins are created equal. All proteins come with different vitamins and minerals in them, and particularly the, the minerals. So some of the proteins that we can take in are only all right. They're okay, they're okay to sustain, but by the time we absorb them, they don't create tissue at the same rate as others. Now, casein tends to create tissue at a wonderfully good rate. So therefore, if you want stronger muscles, even bigger muscles, but stronger muscles particularly, uh, if you want more of the more active connective tissue between your cells, if you want to sustain the size of your organs, including your brain, then you need that particular balance of protein that's available in something like casein. Casein is unique because it has an anti-catabolic effect. Okay, so no other protein that I know has been proven to have an anti-catabolic anti effect. Now, some of them are anabolic, like an egg would be anabolic in the sense that it tends to help you build protein very well. Casein too is anabolic, but casein is anti-catabolic. Now, I don't know, some of you would realize that catabolic means the breakdown of protein. And as people get older, that's what they suffer from, catabolism. And that catabolism then uh, damages the functionality of their, of their system. As they, it, makes, it leaves them more open to illness, more open to even viruses and that type of thing, as we can see. That they are the ones that where the weakness has set in, but there's a lot a person can do to avoid that weakness setting in. And one of them is to go for something like growth hormone, make sure the uh, basic building blocks of protein are available, which are the amino acids, and to take advantage of something like casein, which is that proform protein that you have there, yeah. proform protein, that's what we call it. That's uh, that one there, right. But it's casein based, it's not whey. Whey does not have the same property to prevent the breakdown of existing protein in your body. And it, what, there was a study that they did with uh, police officers in Boston, isn't that right? Between taking. That was, that was, yeah, that was one of the original casein versus whey studies. And uh, this was done by, by a branch of Harvard University, in fact. And they showed that. When, the, when the, these overweight police officers trained, some of them, of course, trained with no, with, with no supplements, others were given whey, others were given casein, uh, that the people on supplements did, did better than the people that took, took no supplements. But the people, the, the individuals that trained with casein got very interesting results. They became twice as strong as the people who trained with whey. Wow. They lost twice as much fat and they gained twice as much solid lean tissue wow. as the people who trained with whey. Yeah, the, um, um, going on from that, 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 that was such an astounding study that uh, much more complex studies were devised, particularly by Professor Boiry. And he, he took a herd of cows and fed them special feed which marked the milk with a tracer that he was able to use in the experiments later on. And he discovered, it, it was he who discovered that casein has this anti-catabolic effect. So the people taking whey were breaking down protein nearly as fast as they were taking it in. Wow. Whereas Professor Worry showed that uh, the reason that the casein taking 
police officers did so well is that they weren't breaking down. The casein was preventing the breakdown of protein as well as building it up. So you too can have a body like those police officers at the end of their study, right? <laughs> Absolutely. If you go down and, to the uh, gym, no trouble. And uh, that, that particular professor, Boire or... Um, Boire, yeah. Yeah, he, he also looked at the effect on burn victims. Isn't that correct? He, he was interested in, in, in the treatment. Uh, he was a very serious medical professor. And their main concern was, uh, how, do you, how do you achieve uh, protein retention in the most difficult situations medically? And the most difficult situations medically is where somebody is burnt over a large proportion of their body because the protein comes out in a liquid form and exudes out of the body and the protein losses are beyond huge in those situations. So they have to find the most efficient way of getting protein back in. And that, that's what stimulated him to do that. He found that in order to keep up the protein levels in the body, the amino acids in the blood, he would have to feed whey maybe 13 times in comparison to casein, which we'd only have to feed once. Uh, the casein would keep up the amino acid levels in the blood. The whey didn't particularly work for this. And, and just for people who may not know where casein is found, may, maybe you just explain that where the sources yeah, of no, whey. It's worth mentioning that, that th these are milk products. These are products from milk. All forms of milk has casein uh, in it. And casein is about 80% of the protein in milk, whereas whey is 20% of the protein in milk. So traditionally, casein is the valuable part. People make cheese from casein, cheese is casein. Uh, and back in the day, because I have a background in agriculture and I know this very well, uh, the, the co-ops in Ireland had a lot of problem trying to get rid of the whey there were a lot of environmental problems because it got poured down the drain when they made cheese or casein or whatever else they were making out of the, the milk. Uh, now with modern technology, the case, the whey can be filtered and turned into a protein powder for bodybuilders. But back in the day, it didn't, didn't have a value in the way that casein has. And in fact, if you look at the world price of casein, it could be two and a half times the price of whey. Wow. Whey is abundant and there's too much of it. It's casein is the one that does it for people. And anybody familiar with their nursery rhymes will remember that uh, little Miss Moffat who sat on her tuffet and uh, she made curds and whey. So whey is the waste product uh, from making cheese and... Traditionally and the waste product. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Great. So just to say at this point, if anybody does have any questions or anything that they'd like to ask, please do post it on the feed and we can we can pose them to Martin. Uh, Martin, finally, then just to do with circulation, because it was a topic that we looked at a little bit last week. So how does this fit together? Core strength circulation. Where, where does that fit in? I'll just remind you that circulation isn't just the blood flowing in your veins and arteries. Circulation is your lymphatic system, which drains the body, but also in between the cells and outside the lymphatic system, there is a whole third and maybe a fourth circulation. There are gaps between the cells, there are tissues between the cells, and your circulation must be complete in all those areas. Now, you may not notice some of you ladies particularly may suffer from a little bit of fluid retention, in your wrists or in your ankles, that's where this system in between the cells may not be working as quickly as it should be for you or as well as it should be. Um, you'll notice with some older people where their circulation is reduced, maybe there's varicose veins, maybe there's uh, um, even damage to the skin as a result of poor circulation, you can see that the tissue becomes hardened, such as in varicose eczema, various and uh, in diabetics we're very very prone to this problem all of these things can be resolved all of them can be helped by the right kind of nutrition keeping a clear diet avoiding foods that totally clog you up certainly on a consistent basis eating foods that tend to clear the circulation for instance you could try starting the day with fruit fruit of any kind but not just a very small bit maybe a bit more than what you're used to you can follow that on with what, what we might consider to be normal foods, but I'm not sure if I'd put cornflakes in there. 
has been an example. I do feel that, that we can improve our general nutrition level. We're not doing too badly in Ireland in some respects, but we don't want it to go in the wrong direction. I just remind you that childhood obesity is a massive problem here, an increasing problem. Now, back in the day, it was less. So let's maybe take a quick reversal on some of the more commercialized dietary offerings that are being put our way and go back to a, 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 a set of practices that's maybe closer to nature. And if we can eat closer to nature, then a lot of the problems that currently beset us uh, may just go away. After that, I recommend that you, hey, do the training, do some kind of training, and particularly even if you're not a training type person, you will get benefit from food supplements. Like my patient that I uh, uh, told you about earlier in the talk, where just by taking some food supplements, because I honestly, uh, I didn't have the time or the, my personal availability wasn't up to doing a long consultation with him. Uh, but I knew that if, if he took the basic advice to take those supplements, that he would get better, and sure he has. In right. fact, it's, he got better, Jamie, if I might say so, he got better of arthritis. Now, you know, that's an industry in Ireland. Arthritis is an industry in that's some form or another. Might, yeah? might be a topic that's worth covering, I think. I think so. Okay. So we have a few questions. Um, first one from Claire. She's wondering about the n a number of amino ore capsules she should take. But the, the amino ore? Yeah, at night. Yeah. We, we, we got results if people only took two at night. We, we, that's one gram of amino or one gram. Uh, that will, will, for most people, produce some kind of results. I possibly think you need to go to three grams for certainty, and that will produce results for you. Now, you should feel more energetic in the morning, by the way, when you take that. That's a very good sign because it means that you've started fat burning. I took my mask. It's one of the things growth hormone does. It burns fat. And uh, so, so three grams is six capsules. Each capsule is a is a half a gram. Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah. That's. I might be inclined to recommend that. Yes. And if how can you check? Angie is asking. How can you check if you have an overactive or an underactive thyroid? What signs should you look out for? Well, I'm talking very broad terms here in the sense of your energy. That if your energy is not up to par. Then for ladies in particular, it could be an iron problem, or in some cases, it could be a thyroid problem. But we probably need to go into it on an individual basis. You'd need a consultation to, to figure some of that out. But uh, energy problems, the first thing to do, the first thing to do is to take some of the supplements. Now, uh, look after iron if you're a lady, and that can be done with a very, very good form of iron called hemoglobin, hemoglobin iron that tends not to oxidize in the body in the same way as, as ordinary iron supplements. Uh, and the second thing to do is to take that amino energized because that brings up pe en people's energy in nearly every case. All that happens is you just get more amino acids into your bloodstream. Everything becomes activated, including your brain. Okay, good. And then which Aduco supplements contain casein? Sam would like to know. Well, if you have a look, you've got a, a, some Proform 100 there behind you. I do. And all our proteins, all our proteins, Proform and Profem, all of those contain, uh, contain casein, including, if, you, if I might say so, mass builder oats. We have a very nice mass builder product, uh, which contains casein and oats and that creatine that I mentioned earlier. And Jamie, let me tell you, I have given that to quite old people. Like the last person, last old person I gave it to uh, was, turns 90 in, in March. And that gentleman has been coming to me since he uh, said, as he says himself, he was saved from death by a heart attack 20 years ago. And he's been on a good diet ever since. He came to me with a lack of energy early in this year, mass builder oats. It makes a transformative effect. It has a transformative effect on older people, particularly if they're weak and can't do any exercise. Okay, so, brilliant. Um, it could be given to anybody. 
it's an unsung hero of creatine and casein and uh, and that's where I would use oats in conjunction with those. So finally, um, I just wanted to ask you, I have one more question after this, but um, I wanted to ask you just about uh, choline, because I think it's something that uh, can have a very good effect on people, particularly when you're looking at strength um, and, and also probably the emulsification of fats. So tell, tell choline, us. Choline, choline uh, activates, your, activates the connection between your muscle and your brain. And it's also a neurotransmitter in, in your brain. When you take choline in conjunction with amino ore, it'll make you very, very strong. It multiplies the strength effect of amino ore. So if you're doing it before training, now I wouldn't take choline before bed at night because it activates your brain too much and it could uh, interfere with your sleeping. But if you take choline, your muscles get firmer and your, your energy will come up. Your mental drive and energy will improve. Not only that, but the problems people have with their gallbladder where they can't properly deal with fats uh, could be resolved by taking a lot of choline because choline tends to help you absorb and emulsify fats. And if it gets into your system, then it tends to improve your overall handling of fats. In fact, we're allowed to say, even officially, that choline is a tonic for your liver. It improves the functioning of your liver. And your liver is your detox organ. Well, your liver has to deal with all the fats in the body as well. Do you know? The liver supplies the gallbladder with bile. And if that's not done properly, you'll get gallbladder problems, stones and inflammation and goodness knows what. Yeah, it's interesting. My wife, who's training as a naturopathic nutritionist, she was also, she was looking at different studies in America where they were concerned that uh, women who were pregnant were very low in choline and the effects that that has on uh, the fetus. And uh, I think it's brain development, it affects as well, isn't it? It's, it forms Co what, hospital choline, isn't it? Yeah, choline, choline is one of the phospholipids and it's available in eggs, abundant in eggs. You won't get it to the same extent in almost anything else. Yeah. Uh, it is available in meat. So where the consumption of eggs and the meat is declining, now you're going to have a, a choline deficiency. Yeah, and choline is not considered to be a vitamin, but it is a near vitamin. That means that you can run into a deficiency of it, uh, a deficiency of it by it being low in the diet under certain circumstances. I think the, the, I think the recommended uh, amount that you needed in your diet was about 750 milligrams. I think an egg has 250 milligrams, if I'm right. I'm pretty much... Well, if you could get 750 milligrams, you'd be doing very well. But that's the equivalent of three Eggs. choline and dinoxetol or choline uh, capsules, frankly, which I take on a consistent basis. Yeah, I actually take it as well. This is my, my nearly empty bottle, which is the choline. Yes. There. I think it's brilliant. Choline that's and dinoxetol. And what does dinoxetol do? In, in Ocetol, choline, choline is more stimulatory in the sense that it will energize your brain a lot. In Ocetol, it helps relax your brain. So you've got a combination of stimulatory and uh, re relaxing neurotransmitters being formed as a result of that. Okay, brilliant. Okay, f final question, because I know you're busy and uh, I really appreciate you've taken so much time with us. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure, and, Jamie. Um, let me see. There was a question here. Oh, yeah. Somebody was just saying, was there a, a good recommendation for when they should have their last meal? And time in the this evening. Isn't, is this before being hanged? <laughs> yeah. I hope that's not what they're talking about. No, not their last meal. No, no. They're, they're not <laughs> on the green aside. No. <laughs> Joking aside. Joking uh, aside. It's, it, it's, it's hard to say, but if uh, they, I mean, there's an opinion that if you eat a lot before bed, that it'll make you fat. I don't know if that's true, but I can tell you one thing, if you eat a lot before bed, it'll stop growth hormone. So it's better to leave two, two to three hours, even if you're not taking them, you know, or before you go to bed, that would be better because it allows for the natural pulse of growth hormone to be released, to, to be released uh, about 30 minutes after you drop off to sleep. But of course, if you're going to go that far, you may as well take the immune war anyway. Great. So I think looking at my notes, that's all the questions that I had for you today. So um, we'll 
have a look at the, the topics, but I think arthritis is definitely a topic that we should cover, particularly when you look at inflammation. I know we covered a certain amount of it last week. Yes. And um, yeah, thank you so much again, once again, for joining us, Martin. And I, I, I mean, I always love listening to you and I've learned so much from you over the years. So it's just brilliant to be able to share it with other people and people maybe who, who haven't been exposed to this kind of information it can make such a difference to their health and their energy levels. And it's really all about energy, life energy, and that's core strength. So thank you very much, Martin. Thanks, Jamie. And goodbye to you all. See you soon. Really appreciate it. And to everybody watching online and who are going to watch it later, we really appreciate you joining us. And thank you so much. And goodbye.